Lesson 17.2, we're going to finish task 2. All right, so we're looking at how we can use the factor pairs from part A to factor x squared minus 8x plus 12. So you can see in the last part we did x squared plus 8x plus 12, and now we want to do minus. So the new values are going to have the same product because they're still going to be plus 12. They're going to have an opposite sum because it's now negative 8 instead of positive 8, and the sum comes from our product or our b value. And that means you need to change both signs. All right, two negatives, remember when you multiply, becomes positive. So that'd be a positive 12 and negative here. And again, always good to look at it. I think it's hard sometimes to answer these questions without actually looking at what we're doing. So um, we've got x squared minus 8x plus 12. And what this is saying is the new values of P and Q should have the same product. All right, so they're going to have the same product. So they're still going to have multiply, get 12, and they're going to have the opposite sum. So we need a negative 8. So you need to change the sign of both values. So we're still using 2 and 6 because we still want to get 8. But now we need negative 8. So we're going to have negative 2 and negative 6. And again, check it. x times x is x squared. Minus 6x plus minus 2x gives me negative 8x. Negative 2 times negative 6 gives me plus 12. So this is the factored form of that form. Okay? All right. Complete the factored form with a number and a sign. All right, so again, this is right here. I've just went through and showed you how to factor that. So it's going to be x minus 2 and x minus 6. So it says a number and a sign. So we've got a number and a sign there. And it says, suppose you want to factor an expression where c is less than 0, such as x squared plus x minus 12. Complete the statements concerning the constant term of the constant term of the factored form. So the signs of P and Q must be, all right, so if we want a negative 12, they have to be opposite signs. All right, so what is the factored form of x squared plus 1x minus 12? All right, so let's kind of look at this. So we know that um, C is 12, uh, sorry, negative 12. C is our end value here, so C is negative 12, and B is 1. There's no um, coefficient there, so we assume that to be 1. So remember, we need to know what multiplies to give us negative 12. So we know that 1 and 12 2 and 6 and 3 and 4 and we know at least one of them has to be negative when we multiply. Well, We need one of them to be negative but we need them to add to equal positive 1. So we want them to multiply to get negative 12 but we need them to add to get plus 1. So these are um, 11 apart, these are 4 apart, these are 1 apart, okay? So if I need to add to get 1, that means the sign, it's important which one gets the negative and which one gets the positive. So I know that I'm going to have x and 3 and x and 4, and I know that I'm going to have 1 plus sign and 1 negative sign. To add to get plus 1, my bigger number, my 4, needs to be positive. Now, if I was looking for negative 1, then the signs would switch, okay? So you can check this again. x times x is x squared plus 4x minus 3x minus 12. And again, 4 minus 3 is 1x. So x squared plus x minus 12. So factoring is kind of the reverse of distributive property. And it's very easy to go back and forth between these forms 
And you shouldn't really miss these because they're easy to check. And again, if you're good at multiplication, these will not be a problem. If you're not very good at multiplication and you depend on your calculator a lot, these will be a little harder. All right, so we're going to have x plus 4 and x minus 3. And then it says, consider the expression x squared minus 5x minus 12. Can you write this expression in factored form where p and q are integers? Select the words and numbers to complete the statement. All right, so let's look at this expression here. So we've got x squared minus 5x minus 12. So c equals negative 12 and b equals negative 5. So we've already got our list of negative 12 over here, so we don't have to make a new list. So what adds to give us negative 5? 1 and 12 will not give us negative 5. 2 and 6 are 4 apart, so you can't get negative 5 there. 3 and 4 are 1 apart, so this expression cannot be factored. So let's see what the answer says here. You blank factor the expression, so you cannot factor the expression because the integer factors of negative 12 do not have a sum of negative 5. Okay, so there's nothing that multiplies to give you negative 12 that adds to give you negative 5. So this expression cannot be factored. All right, that's all for task 2. If you have any questions, let me know. All right, guys, before we move on, I think you need a little bit more practice on just factoring these expressions. So look at these problems, write them down. I would pause the video and try to do these on your own first. And then when you have time to work these out, then start the video back and see how we go through them together. Okay, so again, factoring is something you need a lot of practice on. So take this time to do some practice. All right, so hopefully you've looked at these. Let's look at the first one now. So we're going to have x squared minus 7x plus 6. And we're trying to rewrite these in factored form. So I'm going to have x times x. And then I need something that multiplies to give me 6 and adds to give me negative 7. So 6 and 1. And both of them have to be negative to get a negative 7 and multiply to get positive 6. Again, you can check these. x times x is x squared. x times negative 6 is negative 6x, plus negative 1x is negative 7x. Negative 1 times negative 6 is positive 6. So that works out. All right, so let's look at the next one here. We've got x squared plus 7x plus 12. Again, we're going to factor these. We need to know what multiplies to give us 12 and what adds to give us 7. So what multiplies to give us 12? 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. 3 and 4 add up to give us 7. And at the same time, multiply to give you 12. Again, you can distribute and check it. x times x is x squared plus 4x plus 3x combined to give you 7x. 3 times 4 is 12. So these are so easy to check, you should never miss these. Oh, didn't mean to do that. All right, let's see. All right, I'm going to erase these so I can go on to the next problem here. If I go to the next page, then it will not let me see the problem. So... All right, so number 14, I'm going to do x squared plus 5x plus 6. So what multiplies to give me 6 and what adds to give me 5? So 1 and 6, 2 and 3. 2 and 3 give me 5. Both signs are positive, so I keep my positive signs here. All right, next one, x squared minus 14x plus 48. So I'm going to see what multiplies to give me 48 and adds to give me negative 14. All right, so 48 probably has a few more factors. Let's look at our factors of 48. So 1 times 48 is 48. 
2 times 24 is 48. 3 times, 3 goes into 4 one time, 1 left over, 18. 3 goes into 18 6 times. 4 goes into 48 12 times. 5 does not. 6 goes into 48 8 times. 7 does not. And then we're back to where we started. So these are all our factors of 48. Now we know that we need 1 plus and 1 minus. No, we need 2 negatives because we need a positive when we multiply, but a negative in the middle. So we know our signs are going to be negative. And what multiplies to give us 48 and adds to give us 14. So if I look down through here, it has to be 6 and 8. Again, you need to check it. x times x is x squared. Minus 8x plus minus 6x gives me minus 14x. Negative 6 times negative 8 gives me positive 48. So that works. All right, x squared plus 8x plus 15. So we're going to have x times x. What well, multiplies to give me 15 and adds to give me 8. 1 and 15, 3 and 5. 3 and 5 give me 8. So I need plus and plus. Again, check it to make sure it works. And then you can move on. So we've got x squared plus 10x plus 16. All right, so x times x is x squared. What well, multiplies to give me 16 and adds to give me um, 10. So we've got 1 and 16, 2 and 8, okay, and 4 and 4. 2 and 8 are going to be the ones that add to give me 10 and multiply to give me 16. Both signs are positive, so I keep my positive signs. Again, I hope you took time to work through those on your own first, and hopefully you got all those correct when you checked it. All right, that's all for the extra examples. If you have any questions, let me know.